you seen the guys that you people, wonderful people in a minute. So I bless all of you. Uh, where's my other stuff? There we go. Academic Awards, Travis and Charlie. Love it. Both earned four four point zeros uh, GPAs in 2023, which is incredible. I want you to run with that like you run with the portal stuff. Uh, CBS <laughs> players ranking. Uh, Travis, number one, Shador, number four, for the top 100 players entering the football season. Chauncey Billups, my man, my dear friend, love him to life. A couple weeks ago, uh, selected Basketball Hall of Fame. Unbelievable, man, unbelievable. Great coach, great person, great human being, uh, which has embraced me and my family and uh, this state and uh, showed us what soul food is and everything we can think of, so I love him to life. Black and Gold Weekend Talent Show will be Thursday night. Uh, we've asked people to send in their videos to register, and they're hilarious. I think we're probably going to start posting them today, but the talent show is going to be something to behold. Spring game, we kick off Saturday at 1. We need to sell out that spring game as we did last year. Uh, Lil Wayne concert Saturday night. I'm pretty sure you're going to, you're going to sell that out, you and your friends. Tickets. Um, available at cubuffs.com uh, slash tickets, student of the week. Donna Spores, Safety Union City, California, sociology major. Micah Welch, freshman. Oh, my God, this guy is just student of the week and running the heck out of the football. Um, there we go. I got depth charts if you want to know potentially as well as everything else in their mama that's ready for you guys. So let's go. Let's have a good time. Hey, Coach. Uh, you talked a little bit about Micah there. Yeah. What has he shown you so far since he's gone here? Everything. I'm sorry. I'm watching you while you're watching me, so we won't get it. Nothing wrong no more. <laughs> yeah. If you get it wrong, I got you. Okay. Uh, the kid has a low sense of gravity. You know that in his size and his stature and what he brings to the table. But he studies his butt off. I just was having a conversation with him over there about his snack machines. He, the kid is phenomenal. I'm happy that he came early and early enrollee and uh, able to contribute this spring, getting the understanding of the offense, the flow and the speed of the game, the physicality of it. The kid brings a lot to the table, and he should see touches. He, 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 he does not play. He, he runs a lot like uh, Savion, like Wilkinson. He Runs a lot like that, and both of those guys are similar. But he, he brings a lot to the table. I love it. Jake, go ahead. Uh, Coach, so just we talked to Kevin Mathis a few weeks ago, and he was mentioning how versatile the defensive backs have been. Yeah. Uh, guys playing the slot, guys playing safety. Yeah. Um, just wondering if you could share a little bit more into that philosophy and what it's going to look like next season. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like because we still have, I think, four to five more young men that's coming in that we know that are coming in, especially at the cornerback position. But when you're talking about, you know, bringing Hodge in and McKinney in, these guys are, are unbelievable. And you could put Travis at the nickel or you could, you could, you could, you could I don't want to give away too much, but you, all of those guys are versatile. They could play the slot, they could play the dime, they could play the corner, they could play whatever you desire them to play. And with the stability of Shallow and Cam, um, it's unbelievable. Herm has played with us before, coming from uh, Jackson and Marion. He's going to contribute tremendously, we feel. And, uh, and these other guys are fighting their butts off to get reps and to do what we need them to do. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Good, how are you? Nick Good. Edwards, Team Sports Report. As uh, you're losing some guys to the portal, what are you yeah. looking forward to reestablishing? What position groups are you going to um, I wish you guys do a little more homework when you start talking about the portal and understand uh, what we're losing. What are we losing? I got time today. What are we losing? Potential starters? Or Potential. Yeah. Where? Tight end, running back. You haven't been watching practice, though. Amen. We good. We good. I trust uh, the recruiting team 
I trust our coaches, and please have some faith in me. We're good. We all right. We all right. What happens with the portal, man, and, and you guys need to know, a lot of people are fighting for backups. When a guy's a starter and he transfers, you got to really think about that. I mean, is he really dead? I don't know how many starters have really transferred around the country. Um, I think we got some coming in from visits pretty soon, maybe even this weekend. But we can attract those type of players, but I don't think we're losing those type of players. And, and if we do, we're good. We're good. Quit making a big deal out of nothing. So, I don't, I don't like God, I want to say so much stuff, but I can't. God, I want to say so much stuff. I, I keep remembering my head coach. Let's go. <laughs> Adam, what's your time 24-7 sports? Kind of, kind of building off that. What, what do you view as your needs in the transfer portal? As you uh, kind of this right Always here? depth. Um, I think every coach wants depth. You want depth at the offensive line. We're going to bring in several more of those guys, uh, defensive interior guys as well. Uh, you know we got pass rushers coming. Uh, a couple already signed. Uh, I think we have four defensive backs as well. That's coming too. Already signed. Uh, linebacker. A couple linebackers gonna gonna come in. Uh, what else? I think we already signed. We already got a commitment from the tight end, I believe. So I think we're good. I think we're good. I know where we are. You'll find out where we are real soon. Coach, how you doing? Scott Parker at Colorado. Uh, more of a mental health question. I saw you share a moment the other day with Amir Robinson. Yeah. Just kind of asking him how, how he was doing. Yeah. How do you, as a program, kind of make sure guys stay even deal with a lot of attention, a lot of pressure, schoolwork and all? You know, what, what do you kind of tell them in that regard? We, we, we have tremendous relationships. Uh, we, we know our kids. They know us. We have so many different departments and resources to assist these young men in any form or fashion. And he's a young man that's dear to my heart. I know his father personally, and I can see the spirit on him that he's, he, he's carrying weight, he, he's heavy. So I just wanted to let him know we love him, we appreciate him, anything that he needs, we're there for him. Even if he needs a break, but he's not that kind of guy. He's a workaholic, wants to work hard, wants to work his butt off, want to get in, want to earn a position on a special teams or defense or whatever. And I just appreciate him and his focus through all the turmoil and the trials that he's facing because we know what they are. It's visible. Everyone knows. But he's rocking steady, man, and i got a lot of respect for him. He's a good young man, too. God, he, his father raised a good young man. Yes, sir. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's start right there. I think most prominent players at every program are probably your best recruiters. We have a recruiting department that's superb and they're elite, I really feel. But I wish you could have a conversation with Shador and just tell him to just show you his DM one time. You would not believe the kids that call him or call Shiloh because they're high profile young men that calls Travis, that calls Jimmy, that calls some of the guys that has been here that it's the standard um, to fill us out, to see where we are. Because a lot of young men we can't talk to, it's not legal. So what do they do? They communicate through one another. You guys gotta learn that stuff. That's, that's how the communication starts. And that's how it works. So when Shiloh was making a joke, which he was about, hit me up, my brother offensive, defense or whatever, it, it's a joke, but it's actually real. That's how stuff happens. Um, players recruit players, man. We do a wonderful job as, as the staff, but they got to be validated by players because they played with those players that you're talking about, either in high school or an all-star game. Uh, they know somebody. They know somebody. That's how the recruiting thing works, man, for real. It's players. They know who the dogs are and who the cats are. Sometimes we, we get caught up in the – the personal aspect of it. We may know the uncle or know the father or try to, you know, be a, a refuge for the mother. But no, players know players and how they get down. Do you bump at Kamani Brown? Excuse me? Do you bump at Kamani Brown? Uh, 
I want, you know, I want the best for him, man. I really do. I want that kid to soar. I want him to man up. I, I, I want him to be the best possible athlete and human being and person that he could possibly be. I want him to to fulfill all those dreams that that his mother and, and, and he desires. I, I really, really do, man. I think he's a, a young man that's going to find his way real soon. And sometimes you need uh, to disconnect from something, to reconnect to something else, to restart you and re-energize you and, 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 and stabilize you. But uh, I don't dislike any of the kids that may leave, man, because I, I, I just want the best of them. I, want, I really do. I, I'm just crazy like that. I really want the best for all these kids, no matter what transpires in their life. Uh, well, I don't know what role he's going to play, but the kid can flat out play the game. He's really good. Um, Coach Phillips was on his butt every day in getting him to be consistent, not only in his play, but understanding the game and taking that step up that he desires to be that guy. He has uh, like three alpha guys out there with him, and he has to be one of those. You can't fall back with those guys in that meeting room. Those guys are dogs, and there's four other dogs that's on their way right now as we speak. So that kid can play the game. I can't wait to see him put it all together, and he's putting it all together right now, right before our eyes. Hey, Coach, Taylor Smith from the Buckbeak. How do you, um, I know that you always strive to have discipline and passion to make yeah. part of the program and how sometimes it overshines talent. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a huge emphasis to place in each other accountable? Yo, yeah. Yeah, that, that's part of the maturation of this team. That's, that's part of the unity of this team. That's, that's part of the leadership. I have a leadership group on this team that consists of probably 17 players or more that I meet with every week. And uh, we, we recharge them and energize them and give them good words of wisdom and that they can abide by and, and go out and execute. Um, and they kind of police the locker room and do what they need to do on the field as well. I, I love where they are, who they are, and how they get down. And, and not all of those young men are starters. You, you, you don't have to be a great athlete or starter or uh, NFL destined player to be a leader. We got leaders that come in all type of uh, packages. Coach Shunk, you would think the post. My man. Uh, you, like, your man, you mentioned, My man. You mentioned depth. Yeah. How challenging is it, not just Keeping that, holding that, because guys are getting hurt, get hurt, you know that better than anybody. Right. But building chemistry and culture when there's that much turnover every spring or something. Uh, like I think that's with every school. That's not just here. That's with every school. You guys just are compensated to pay attention to us a little more than anybody else, but that's with everyone. Um, the truth of the matter is, I mean, everybody's fighting for depth. That's what you're fighting for, those guys. You're, you're, you're fighting for to really get those ones that are pro-minded and they have that capability of going to the league and, and producing here, but then you you want those guys right behind that's waiting their turn, that cannot wait. And you don't want that guy to be a three. You want that guy to be a kind of a one and a half and not truly a two that they have competition. Um, right now, the changes you see in the portal are a lot of twos, man. Yeah. That, that's not. I'm not saying that about us, but that's what usually transfers in the portal um, from place to place. And uh, some of those guys are going to go and they're going to be a one somewhere else, which is a beautiful thing, and I think that's what they desire. And that's what the goal is, to be a starter, to, to go to the NFL and, and live that dream, man. And I'm all for them. I want them to do so. Hey, Coach, uh, Jack Carlo with the Buffalo's Wire. Um, with spring end coming up in about a week, do you anticipate kind of running it similar to what you did last year in terms of you go like one offense, this, two defense? This, yeah, yeah. Different you're gonna yeah, do yeah. Because 
one's offense playing against the two defense. Don't the two defense want to be the one defense? Okay. And then you have the one defense playing against the two offense, and that two offense wants to be the one. Then you have times where you may mix it up one versus one. But if you don't go one versus two, how are you going to tell that those twos are capable of playing against ones? That's the way we practice every day. That's the way we kind of place that. I, I like that thought process, and then threes go against threes. So um, I hate to say one, two, and three. Let's just say uh, black, white, or gold. Let's just put it like that to give them their respect. Okay, a couple more. Go ahead. Steve's sports report. Dylan Edwards talked to us about how he's kind of rounding out his skill set, playing a little bit more receiver. What have you seen from his development, and how do you imagine he'll be used? Uh, we're, Dylan is a tremendous asset. We're going to try to get the ball to Dylan in all forms of facets. We we, we got some pretty good and good receivers, so he has to develop that tremendously to be able to take a receiver off the field to put a running back out there. That that's that's kind of tough. That's asking a bit much, especially with. You, you know who we have coming here as receiver and who we are, have already in-house. But Dylan, man, I mean, just splitting him out at times and seeing him in front of a linebacker out wide is, is, is a scary thought. Uh, and Pat is going to do a great job, man, of, of getting him the ball where he needs to get the ball on the go. Um, he's developing, running the ball inside as well. As you know, he can get outside and he change the speeds, change the pace and his burst. And uh, his mental and physical toughness is, is up above par. We're proud of him. We really are. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell from mm -hmm. Um I have two questions for you. First off, with the tight ends, what are you seeing out of, like, Savelle and Morgan? And Tremendous athletes. Tremendous athletes. Hand-eye coordination, can catch the ball, can get vertical. They're physical. Defensive guys, you know, so. They got that hit, man. They really do. And, but they're they're athletes. They're really versatile. And then offensive line, who specifically? I mean, you talk about all the, of them. They look better. Like, all of them. All. Yeah. It ain't just one just saying, hey, I'm standing out. No, these guys, these guys are a tremendous group and they're a tremendous family. You, you rarely see one without the other. You rarely see one of those guys anywhere. You see three or four of them together at all times in uh, – Tell you what, Rock, I we we'll call it Rock, Tyler is, 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 is brown, is, is killing. He's probably grading higher than uh, the guys on a daily basis. And he's consistent as I don't know what. But you talk about physicality and being able to run the ball, we should be able to do that. Is it a combination of talent and also more cohesion from that group? Uh, Phil is really good. Phil is really good. Phil Lolo is really good at what he does. He's been there. He's done that. They respect that. They admire that. Um, they try to embody that and emulate that. And his communication skills are impeccable. Um, Gunner's done a phenomenal job as well. But this is these are different kids, man. I don't know if you guys have had the pleasure to meet any of them, talk to them. They're different, aren't they? In which way? Anybody else? What? What's the deal? Yeah. And physicality on the field. You guys would know that, but they're, they're, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different game that they're playing. Like they're they're really play. They they really have a why. Not saying that nobody else didn't. They really have a why. And they're out there fulfilling that man. I, I love the way they attack practice, and they're holding one another truly accountable. They don't play about each other. I'm proud of that. Go ahead, Brian. On the note of players recruiting players, Fedor yeah. made it very well known that he wanted Lejante Western. Yeah. What have you made it? What have you seen from those two, especially? From oh my God, Lejante is a pro, man. He's a Florida boy, and he comes with that dog mentality, that swagger in him, that that he's he's making Jimmy go get it. Jimmy's already Jimmy already was a go getter, but now Jimmy is all right. All right, I got that. Shoot, you see what he's doing over there? Like it's a, it's very competitive. And I like it. Um, Shador's been doing that, so I don't know why you guys go crazy about, is that me? I don't know why you guys go crazy about uh, them 
recruiting. That's how it goes. That's how the story goes. You guys been knowing that. That's that's one of our best recruiters. Shador is unbelievable. Yeah, you don't think uh, <laughs> with all these kids that come in here and they don't want to meet Shador, Charlotte or Travis or, or some of our key guys, like that's what they request. So those guys make themselves available uh, for those young men. We got a bunch of guys coming up. I know spring weekend, and I'm pretty sure we're going to uh, make sure we have some tremendous hosts that, that are happy with the program and played here and doing some phenomenal things on and off the field. NFL draft is about 10 days away yep. or so, and almost immediately after it happens, we're going to get the think pieces about next year. We're right. going to start getting the breakdowns about next year. Just curious, before we get to that point, who is your NFL comp for sure? I don't do that. I don't compare my kids and nobody's kids to another kid. I want them to be the first of somebody, not the second of somebody. I don't do that. I don't comp them to nobody. Ain't another Travis out there. Ain't another Shador out there. Ain't another Shiloh and Jimmy or Lejante. I mean, shoot, these dogs on the line. I don't. I don't. NFL does that foolishness. I don't even know if that even sticks. They always trying to do that to, to, to get to pique your interest. I don't believe in that. And I don't know who reported that. I said there were several teams that my kids wasn't going to. Whoever did that is a liar and that's stupid. And uh, I like to track that. I like to track that stuff down and hold people accountable in the media, man. Like they should not be able to tweet or text or something. <laughs> like they put some stupid out like that. That was I don't know who who, who ran with that. Who was the first one re reported that? It was me, coach. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like you, son. I'm shy though. I'm your favorite. Hey, 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 hey! They they tripping about your uh, your your post. You told them I'm trying to win. But isn't that, how, isn't that how it always goes? Remember, we, we used in South Carolina, you had people uh, calling you about wanting to come to Jackson with you, right? Yes, yeah, about players. Like what you said in your interview yesterday was spot on. What did I say? I don't remember. Like you're not just, the first person you're going to reach out to isn't really going to be a coach. It's going to be a player. Right. One of, the, one of your friends you know. They're going to check the temperature. They're going to see how the program is because another player is going to tell them that. They don't know. That's how the NFL is, too. Yeah, he's right. Exactly. One more, so I get out of here. Deshala's gonna come and have a great time. I'm pretty sure. Coach, just wanted to ask you, what's it been like um, working with Coach Sapp out on the field? Oh my God! Probably had an idea of what it was gonna be like working with him, but how was that kind of met your expectations? Coach Sapp is a phenomenal communicator. He's on television for several years with me at the NFL Network. He's, uh, God, he knows his craft. He knows his craft uh, superbly. That's why he has a gold jacket. It's not about just his athletic ability. He knows this game, and he's able to communicate that in his passionate way. And I love um, how he does it. I love what he brings to the table, who he is, how he is. He's a phenomenal uh person, I'm just really glad and I'm thankful that our young men are getting that on a daily basis. That Just that communication. I, I love that because shoot, during every coach but three of our staffers uh, have been in the NFL coaching the playing. And that's tremendous. That's tremendous for these young men to glean from. With Shallow uh, respects the heck out of his, his coach and his defense coordinator. Same guy, you know, for so many reasons, mainly because he's been in the NFL. He's been where he wants to go, and that commands a different level of respect. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh.